our STEM video for the month of October. I'm Miss Chrissy with the Glen Carbon Library. Um, and today we are going to be making circuit bugs. Okay, so this one I thought would be really fun for October because we'll be making some creepy crawly bugs for like um, Halloween. It's also one that's a little bit more um, complicated than some of our last ones. So you're gonna definitely need some parent help and some parent supervision for this one. Um, so hopefully you signed up for your kit. If you signed up for your kit, these are the um, supplies you're gonna get. Here's an example of what we're gonna be making our little circuit bug. I'll bring it up closer so you can see it. We're gonna make, this one's a little bumblebee that has eyes that really light up. So we will talk about how we're gonna make that coming right up. Okay, so the first supply that you're gonna need that might be a little tricky to come by, it won't just be at home, are some button batteries. Okay, these are a choking hazard. Please be careful with little ones or younger siblings and make sure parents are paying attention to these. Um, we're also gonna have two little LED lights. Now they might be different colors than what that one is. I'll try to make sure that you get two of the same color, um, but they might not be green. So we're gonna have two lights for the eyes. We're gonna have a clothespin for the body. Show them your clothespins, guys. Okay. You're gonna have some metal wire to uh, connect all the components together with. Um, you're gonna have some electrical tape to help hold some of it together. Uh, then we're gonna have pipe cleaners to construct your bugs. That's so those are the, the fun part. That'll be the fun part. Those are gonna be the things that are in your kit. Okay. The items that you might need to supply for yourself from home include some scissors and maybe a cutting board. Okay, that's what we're gonna use here today. Okay, so let's talk about what we're gonna make. We are gonna make some circuit bugs. We're gonna be doing a steam activity. So you remember last time how we talked about the difference between STEM and steam? Let's refresh all of our memories. What does the S stand for in Science. STEM or steam? Science, Evie says. Um, Abel, what does the T stand for? Do you remember? Why don't we throw that one over to Nora? You can get the E, because I know you know what the E is. What's the T, Nora? Technology. Technology, very good. Abel, what's the E? Electricity. Ooh, today we are doing electricity. Can you take your mask down so we can hear you? Electricity. Electricity is what we're going to be doing today, but that's not what the E stands for in STEM. Engineering. Engineering, very good. And then what's the M, Evie? Um, mathematics. She's cheating on our little mural up here at the library. It has steam up at the top. Um, and then what's the A, Nora? Art. Art. Today we're going to add the art component in um, like we did last time with the paint. Today the art component is going to be constructing, making the craft out of the bug. Engineering. Um, so for the first bit, the science bit, we're going to be talking a little bit about electricity. Now there are two main types of electricity. There's static electricity and there's current electricity. We're going to be dealing with current electricity today. Static electricity means electricity that stays in one spot because the word static means to stay put. Current electricity is electricity that flows from one spot to the next and electricity is just energy that flows from one spot to the next or stays still. One example of current electricity is lightning. Now today while we are filming this, there happens to be a storm going on outside of the windows there. So if you happen to see some lightning out of the window, that'll be a great example of some current electricity right here um, in nature. Um, let's see. Nature Electric is everywhere. Nature is everywhere, that's right. So another good example of current electricity is all of the electrical appliances that we use in our houses. All right, lights, any um, appliance like a refrigerator that might be in your kitchen or a washer and dryer, um, any device that you might use has current electricity. So any iPad or Kindle or switch or even watches. Um, or even a TV. Or a TV, exactly. Those all use current electricity to work. Um, for that electric current to turn that device on, there has to be a complete circuit. 
So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to make complete circuits. It's a closed path or a loop that allows the electric current to flow. If the circuit is made by linking the components, in our case we're going to link the two little lights to the battery, which is going to provide the energy to turn the lights on, and we're going to connect them using the wire. Now, if there is any break anywhere in the circuit, if that pathway isn't completely closed the whole time, that current is not going to flow. Okay, so if the wire is broken, if the light is broken, if the battery's not hooked up correctly, it's not going to work, which makes this one a little tricky. So one of our extra supplies that we need to bring into today's project is a little bit of extra patience. It's going to take some trial and error. If it doesn't work, we might have to take it apart and start all over. All right, so that's going to be the engineering part of our activity today is we're going to engineer the circuit. We're going to we're going to take the components, we're going to connect them with the wire, we're going to attach them to the clothespin, and that's going to be our engineering bit. And the art bit is going to be the fun part with the pipe cleaners where we make it look like a cute little creepy crawly bug. Okay, so we're going to start with our LED lights. So everybody's going to get two LED lights. Okay. Are they all the same colors? I think these are all the same colors. And then you're going to get one button battery per kit that you signed up for. Okay. And so you just pop them out of the foil here. There's one button battery for you. There's one button battery for you. And there's one button battery for you. Now, the first thing you want to do is let's test our LEDs. Okay? The way that we're going to test our LEDs is we're just going to put them on the battery. And we're going to make sure that the lights and the batteries work. Now, the other important part about the flow of electricity is it has to flow from the positive to the negative. So you have to make sure that your positive and your negative sides are lining up correctly. So let me see your battery, Abel, so I can show them on the camera. So on the side of your battery, you're gonna see a little bitty plus sign on one side. That is your positive side. The other side is your negative side. There's nothing there, but just know that if it's not positive, then it's negative, okay? So, and on your LED light, you have two little metal stems coming down off the bottom. The longer stem is your positive side of your light. So what you wanna do is you wanna match up the positive side on your battery with the longer stem and you can just slide the battery right between there like that. And as long as that light lights up, then you know both your battery and your light work. So Abel, go ahead and put the long side and just you can bend them around. And here, let me show them yours, Evie. So Evie's got both of her lights on the battery, like that, and they are lighting up. So we know that they both work. So you just wanna test that real quick to make sure that your components are working before you connect them all up with the wires and get everything you set, and then it doesn't work, and it's all just because you got a bad light. Okay, and if any part of your kit is bad once you get it, please let us know and we'll try and replace that for you. Okay, so. Everybody's got working lights and batteries. Perfect. The next part you wanna do, and this is the tricky part that you're gonna need parent help with, is you're gonna take your wire, everybody should get two pieces of wire for each person that got a kit, okay? And you're gonna strip the ends of it. Now you'll notice that this wire is very, very thin and it's red, but the red is actually um, like a paint coating around the wire. It will not flow electricity if that paint coating is still on there. And that's because of um, it's insulating. So in order to conduct electricity, you have to have the right kind of material. Copper metal will conduct electricity. Um, other things don't conduct electricity as well, and those are known as insulators. And then metals and things that do conduct electricity are known as conductors. Makes sense, right? So when you strip the ends of the metal, okay, it will conduct electricity. So I'm going to demonstrate with this wire. Okay, 
I have stripped the ends of this wire in advance. So the two ends, even though they still kind of look red, you can see if you're not on film that there are some metal bits showing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna borrow somebody's battery. Evie, please don't touch those because I don't want them to get mixed in with the one that I haven't stripped yet. Okay, so don't touch. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, here's the light and the battery that work. I will wrap this end of the wire around the positive side, like so. And these um, little stems on the lights, you can bend and move around. So I'm gonna do it like that, see? And then I'm gonna touch this to the negative side. And then I'm gonna take the other end of this wire here and I'm gonna touch it to the positive side and we're gonna see if it lights up. If I've stripped it correctly, then it will. So see there, it is lighting up and I've got the positive side sticking out here with the wire so that the positive side of the electricity is flowing all the way down this wire from, actually it's flowing from the battery all the way up to the light. Okay, but you see how it's kind of flickering? That's because it's not a perfect there we go, because I had the I wasn't holding it tight enough here. Okay. But if I tried that same thing with this wire that I haven't stripped yet, okay, same thing, connecting the wire to the positive side, like so. And then connecting this to the negative side. And then I touch the wire to the positive end, it's not lighting up because there's no electricity flowing. It's not conducting because that paint that's on the ends of these wires is um, insulating. It's not allowing the electricity to flow. Whose battery did I take? Please don't. Thank you. So like I said, I've already stripped these wires for us to use, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to strip this last one. Okay, now you definitely need a parent to help you do this. Okay, and the way that I found the easiest to do is what I did with all of my wires to do these is I kind of twisted them all together. Okay, so you can do them all at once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this one in half. Okay, so I can get both ends at the same time. Let's straighten this one out because I had it curled around that light. Okay. And then I have a, just a cutting board. I'm gonna lay them flat on the cutting board and I'm gonna use the sharp side of some scissors or you could use a knife. And I'm just gonna scrape across and get that paint off, okay? Okay, so I took a minute to just scrape this last um, wire for you guys. And make sure that you're very careful with that. And I've made the wires extra long so that you have plenty of space to wrap them around the clothespin and to make sure that everything's good. Constantly be checking your lights and your wires to make sure that they are still completing the circuit, okay? Because if you get to the very end and you've got it all wrapped up in pipe cleaners like this one is here and it doesn't work, you're gonna have to unwrap everything and find where the break in that circuit is, okay? These wires are also very thin. Um, you can cut them with just regular scissors if you need to shorten them at all. Um, but that can also make it a little tricky to work with because they might break and then you gotta scrape the new ends again. So remember to use patience wires. So you're actually gonna need four wires per person. So here's two more for you and two more for you. Very good. For some reason, only one more for you. Let's get one more here. I only have three. We only have three for now, but that's okay. We can turn everybody again. Remember, we are going to um, strip the ends of these here. So you can kind of watch me do that. I'm just going to put them right here on the cutting board. And just strip them right off. It's not fun to listen to. Once you have those scraped, what you're going to do is you're going to take your light and I would separate the stems a little bit here, like so. Able to remember. 
and you're going to take one wire and you're going to wrap it around the positive end of one of your lights. Remember, the positive end is the longer stem. Okay, so we're going to wrap it around like so and just wrap it around a couple times, try to make it a little tight. So you can see what I'm doing here. Nice and tight there. Okay. And then do the same thing to your other light. Make sure you're doing the positive end on both of them. Both positive ends of your lights wrapped around wires there, like so. I know this is hard to see on film. Okay, and then just to double check, what we can do is we can stick these negative ends on. Why is that one lighting up? On um. Oh, because it's touching the other light. So stick both negative ends on the battery. And then bring those other ends of the wires around and touch them to the positive side, and we should get lights. Sorry, these long wires are kind of tricky to. So I'm putting the negative. Okay. So there we go. We're getting lights. They're kind of flickery, but that's because the wires are moving around a bit. Okay. So. Once both ends have been wrapped on the positive side, then the wires themselves at the end can get twisted together as well. Okay, I will help you. So you can kind of just twist these two wires together and these will be your positive positive side. Once you have both positive ends of your light wrapped, yep. And then this is going to be your positive wire. So like this. See, I got my two lights dangling and only one wire here. Okay, once you have that done to the positive side of your LED light, remembering to check it as you go, we're going to just do the exact same thing to the negative side of your light. So take your other two wires and you're going to do the exact same thing. Okay, wrap the negative side. Now, if they get jumbled and confused, oops, sorry, I stepped out of the camera there. If they get jumbled and confused after you've done it, like if you mix up which one's positive and which one's negative and you can't tell anymore, it's okay. It's really easy to just try and flip the battery around. Thank you, sir. Because, yeah, once they get wrapped up, it's a little harder to tell which um, end of the light is longer. So harder to tell which one's positive and which one's negative. Okay, what I ended up doing with my bumblebee when I was done is I made sure once I knew which side was which for the wires, I marked it just with a pen on my clothespin so I would know which way to put my battery in. Okay, so then twist those negative ends of the wires together like so. And then now I should have an easier time testing it because I can just take these two ends and hold them to the lights and see if they're working. I might have switched them around. Let's see. Do you twist them together again? Yes, you can twist them together again. Okay. All right, so I had to rearrange the wires a little bit, maybe re-strip them a little bit, but now I've got both my lights lighting up, if you can see here, okay, with my wires. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take your clothespin, and on the end that you pinch together, 
you're gonna put one LED light on one side, like so, kind of just close the pins around it, like that. You can see what I did there. All right, on one side, and then do the same with the other light on the other side. And we're gonna use a little piece of electrical tape to hold them in place. It doesn't matter which end goes where. It doesn't matter which one's positive and which one's negative. You're gonna get a piece of electrical tape probably just wrapped around a straw or something. It's gonna be the best way for us to get it to you in your kit. It might be a different color than white. We have, I ordered a couple of different um, spools of electrical tape. So just cut off a little piece of these. You're gonna get extra in your kit. So if it's easier to do just one at a time, just do one at a time. So just put your light on there like so. And then you're just going to wrap it with the tape like this. Now, you're going to want to be careful because your circuit might get broken in the midst of all this tape. Um, my advice to you is just do it a little tight. And if it ends up not working after you're done, you're going to take it apart and try again. Okay. So if you want, go ahead and test it again once you get one taped on, just to make sure we're still lighting up. We're still lighting up on both ends, so I know this tape is good. Next, I'll put my other light on the other side here. The nice thing is they all kind of come on really thin wire that's really bendy. So if it's not quite working, just try bending it a little bit. You can kind of shape it the way you need it to be to work. I'm getting the tape between these pieces is nice and tight like that. Okay, so there I have my two lights and I will test them again just to make sure they're still lighting up. Oh, now see this one's not lighting up now. There it goes. Might just have to fiddle with that one a little bit to get it to light up, but there we go. Two lights lighting up, taped to my clothespin, just holding the wires to the battery to test them. Okay, so once you have both lights taped on and you have your wires hanging off the end here, the way I did it when I made my bumblebee, was then I took the wires, the extra wire here, and I just kind of wrapped them around the clothespin. Okay, so you're gonna wrap them around the clothespin. Now that's gonna prevent it from opening very far, so maybe do it a little loose. You don't want them to wrap too tight. Okay, or the other option is to cut the wire so that you know you have the right length, but then what are you gonna have to do with the ends? If you cut the wire to make it shorter, what do you have to do with the ends? Um, you're going to have to change them. Them. You're going to have to twist them and strip the paint off. So you'll have to do the little cutting board thing with your scissors again, and that is completely fine if that's the way you want to do it. Just make sure you don't forget that step or you're not going to conduct any electricity. You're not going to have any electricity flowing. Um, you won't have a current. You won't have a complete circuit. Okay? So this bit can get a little tricky. You're going to want to put the ends of the wires in between where the clothespin opens so that when you slide that battery in there and it closes, it's closing to complete the circuit. Okay, so I kind of just had to fiddle with that um, to get it to work as best you can, okay? So now comes the art part. Now we get to use our pipe cleaners to wrap them around to make the body. Now, you can do antenna, you can do wings, you can do legs. Um, it's just gonna be fun to see what kind of cute little adorable bugs you can come up with with your pipe cleaners. 
we are going to send you three to four per um, kit. Um, if you need more or want to use more, by all means, use whatever you have at home to help construct your bug. I'm going to pause the video here for a minute and let these kids play with their pipe cleaners and construct their bug. Okay, and we'll come back with our finished products. Okay, so our artists have finished constructing their adorable bugs using the pipe cleaners. Um, they engineered the circuit. We used science to understand how the electricity works. Um, you can use math if you want to actually measure how long you want your wire to be. You can measure it and then cut it. Um, make sure to strip the ends again, don't forget. And so your finished product should look a little something like this. You're gonna squeeze, you squeeze this together to fit the battery in. Remember, if it doesn't work when you put the battery in the first time, try flipping the battery around. If it still doesn't work, you might have to completely take it apart and start over and try again. Like I said, this one takes a whole lot of patience. Um, a little tip is to mark the back of your bug with positive so you know which way to put the battery in. The lights will stay on as long as that battery is in there until you take the battery out. There is no on and off switch for this. Um, that's what switches do. They open and close the circuits to turn the lights and things on. So to open and close this circuit, we just have to take the battery out and that, that breaks the circuit and it turns it off. To plug the circuit back in or to turn the circuit back on, you just stick the battery back in there between the wires, okay? It might be helpful too to use a little bit of tape to hold the wires in place back here. Once you have it all wrapped up with um, pipe cleaners, it becomes a little harder to open to fit that battery in, so just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, have fun creating. I'd love to see your creations. And remember, if it doesn't light up or if it doesn't work, you can try again, or you just have a really cute bug either way. So let's see what kind of bugs you guys came up with. Nora, you wanna share, share your bug? This is a bug that I made up. It okay, it doesn't have legs, so it can't move. So it just keeps flying. It like just that. flies, but it has pink. some pretty wings, and it's pink and blue and purple. Very cool. You want to fly it on up here? You can show it. <laughs> Very cute. All right, Evie, what'd you come up with? A butterfly. A butterfly. Do you want to walk and show it? Ooh, it's got some heart-shaped wings <laughs> with purple and yellow. Very pretty. Very pretty. All right, and Abel, what did you come up with? You said you were going to create your own bug, didn't you? Here. This is the bug Abel came up with. It has legs, and it's red and black and yellow, and it's like a little beetle bug. So you can come up with dragonflies or bumblebees. Kind of, that's kind of what I was going for here with the black and, and yellow. You can do butterflies like the girls kind of did, dragonflies, fireflies. Whatever you want to come up with, that's the fun part. That's the art part. Okay, so we will keep working to make sure those circuits get together and that the lights actually turn on. You guys keep working. Show me your pictures. I'd love to see what kind of creepy crawly bugs you come up with for October. Um, and then don't forget to sign up for um, November's STEM kit. And I will see you then. And I want to say a special thank you to my helpers who Abel pointed out earlier that I forgot to introduce at the beginning of the video. My apologies, but we'll say thank you to our helpers, Nora and Evie and Abel. Thanks, guys, for coming to the video, and I hope you had fun um, and got your bugs to light up. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.